three, two. Hey everyone, well, gyms have reopened in the state of Texas and here in El Paso at 25% occupancy. So this week, people started heading back to the gym. Well, today I'm talking to Dr. Rand McLean. He is an expert in sports medicine. He is also the chief medical officer for LCR Health. They are based in Santa Monica and we are talking via Zoom. So doctor, my first question here is, I mean, gyms are high touch areas. So in the COVID era, what will going to the gym look like? Give me a sense of that. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I will address the fact that, yeah, this is an area that's hard hit because it's an area where the virus can spread very easily. You've got a high concentration of people and who knows how much they're going to limit that, but it would be wise to do so if your interest is in lowering the risk of transmission. Um, you know, gyms are loaded with bugs. They always have been, you know, they're like a restroom. Um, the issue with the gyms and any place else really is the, 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 the poison comes down to the dose, right? Um, you can sit here and breathe. And if we're in an enclosed room rather than on zoom, okay, depending upon the size of the room and how close we are, the virus might transmit over, you know, a couple of hours. Okay. Whereas all it would take if we're sitting across from one another in a gym is really one sneeze appropriately directed anyway. And you could get enough of what we call the viral load, enough of the virions, the viral particles to contract the disease. So, you know, obviously gyms are high risk area because uh, people are breathing deeply, rapidly. Okay. So it's not just like we're sitting here, uh, breathing and not talking. It's more than talking, although talking is going to occur in a gym too. So um, you can see how it could be considered a high risk area. And I'm, you know, I'm a registered libertarian, so I'm not sitting here saying we shouldn't open gyms. I'm just from a medical standpoint stating that this would definitely be a high risk area. And one consideration would be if you have uh, what we would call morbidities in, in medicine, certain illnesses, like if you're 60 pounds overweight and considered obese, uh, if you've got uh, uncontrolled hypertension, uh, uncontrolled diabetes, COPD, what we call comorbidities that are, that are occurring with um, this COVID-19 infection, then it'd probably be low on your list of places to visit, okay? Um, ventilation is very important because, um, again, you've got a bunch of people that potentially are carrying this virus and releasing it into the room. You want to get it out of the room as best you can. Again, the, the poison is in the dose. Your exposure is what's going to determine whether or not you're going to contract this virus. So you've got, on the one hand, the people that are, and remember this, this, this virus tends to sit mainly in the, in the lungs anyway, right? In the, in the airway from the uh, nasopharynx all the way down to deep in the lungs. So you've got potential vectors coming in. You want vectors getting rid of it. So, you know, you want your gym to be thoughtful in terms of ventilation, getting the, the, the air out of there as quickly as possible. Uh, nightly cleanings are mandatory, but you know, you might want to, uh, see if your gym is doing the best they can on a, on an hourly basis, even to, to keep the areas clean because right now we're talking about aerosol transmission, you know, what comes out of someone's mouth and in droplets. Yeah. Um, but the basics are still there. It's the hand that touches an object that's been infected because someone's speaking around it and the droplets are, 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 or, you know, right there on the dumbbell or the barbell, right? And then someone grabs that, it has viral particles, and then forgets and puts it near the eyes, the nose, or the mouth, and that's a major source of transmission. That's a no-brainer. And, and so one of the things I recommend is wearing gloves, not because that's going to protect you directly, but indirectly by reminding you not to touch your face. You're not getting infected through the hands, but, it, you know, if you're wearing some of these surgical gloves, it, it hopefully will remind you not to do this or, you know, whatever, uh, you know, whatever it takes. That's the same thing for the masks that people are talking about. Because even some of the top ones, like the N95s, they're not 100% effective, uh, effective, I should say. Uh, there's a reason why they're called 95s, not 100. They, they give considerable protection. 
uh, and they're rated highly, but it's not a fail safe method. Most people are going to wear the cotton masks, the bandanas, and you know some studies report that the the, the transmission is um, uh, you know you might block about twenty percent of the viral particles in the air. So that's not really for your own protection as much as it is the protection of others. So that if you do cough or sneeze, which can travel anywhere between uh, you know fifty to two hundred miles per hour, respectively. Uh, and in one dose infect somebody near you or a lot more around you, it's, it's a high dose of particle expression, we'll call it, right? Uh, that's going to protect others more so than you. But that also may remind you, hey, don't touch my face if you're wearing a bandana. Okay, so my final question here, would you go back to the gym? Again, on a personal level, I believe everyone should be able to, to do and, and make choices uh, but you're asking me, my choice would be, no, I wouldn't go to a gym full of people. Not at this point. I, you know, I think it's a sacrifice that we, or I'm willing to make because again, there are other alternatives that keep me in shape and help our health, uh, and mine and others I'm saying, um, that don't run that risk. And, and we're finding more treatments. Uh, we might not find what Dr. Fauci cures the knockout anytime soon, but as we find more treatments and eventually we hopefully find a vaccine, which looks like it'll be sooner rather than later, maybe it's 18 months, but maybe it's sooner, I can deal with that. Again, just my personal opinion. Dr. Rand McLean, Chief Medical Officer of LCR Health in Santa Monica, California, thanks so much for sharing your time and expertise. Hey, my pleasure. If you need anything else, I, it's obviously uh, fun for me. So I hope it's obvious fun for me. So uh, hit me up anytime.